Hey, Motorman here. I just got back from Homestead, Miami racetrack. And I know what you're thinking, a motorcycle like this, why would I take it on a racetrack? Well, it's because at Champ School, they teach you how to ride any motorcycle. As long as it got two wheels, they're gonna teach you how to handle that motorcycle much better at high speeds. It's gonna save your life, plus it's a lot of fun. I went down there, took my Z-Pro trailer because it's 700 miles round trip to Miami, and that is a boring, boring ride. Plus, I wound up getting stuck in traffic in three hours. But anyway, trailer worked flawlessly. It's the first long trip I had with it, 700 miles. Bike was as steady as could be. And I was taught and coached by the best of the best at Champ School. That includes Kyle Wyman, his brother Cody Wyman, uh, Chris Harris. I mean, the best of the best are the instructors there. And I sure learned a lot. So watch this video. Towards the end, you're going to see a conversation that I had with Kyle. I think it's very enlightening. And if you'd like to see the entire conversation that I had with Kyle, it's uh, about 22 minutes long. Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll put it up next week. Welcome back to Champ School YouTube. I'm your host today, Coop DeVille, and we are at beautiful Homestead Miami Speedway. Today we're gonna to talk to two amazing riders, Jerry Palladino, who is a longtime career veteran police motorbike cop. Retired, owns a ton of schools. You might have heard of him from Ride Like a Pro. Now, his techniques are some of the best in the world for low speed riding. I'm sure you've seen those awesome police videos where they're riding what they call the police rodeo. And those are amazing for low speed maneuverability under 25 miles an hour. Now, getting out of the parking lot, on the other scale of things, we've got Kyle Wyman, 2021 Moto America Baggers Class Champion. This is the fastest guy on a Harley in the world. Not only that, he's an instructor here at Champion Riding School. Now you might be saying to yourself, well Coop, those techniques in the parking lot is fantastic. And what Kyle's doing on a bagger in Moto America series at the racetrack is phenomenal. But where does that leave me? The average guy, the average woman, just wanna go for a ride. The parking lot's great, but I'd like to get out of the parking lot. And the odds of me going to the racetrack on my bagger are slim to none. Well, let's get with these two and let's see if we can find some middle ground. Let's go. So the whole idea of body position, why we're doing it is we could run less lean angle. If we could run less lean angle, what could we use more of? Throttle or brakes. Throttle or brakes, right? So it really is kind of the cheat to the sport. If we could run less lean angle and have more of this and this available, pretty damn good trade-off. Champ School is about controlling your motorcycle at whatever pace you want to ride. Where Jerry's got a lot of skill and it's amazing how these guys can get around tight U-turns and circles and all the motor cop competition type of skills. At a racetrack, we're rolling, right? We're moving pretty quick. You know, being able to stop and slow and turn your motorcycle at high speed is important whether you're riding on the street or the track. So Champ School is not a racing school. It's a motorcycle handling school and you know whether you're street track whatever you're doing racers create new ways to ride motorcycles they find ways to get the most out of motorcycles so the techniques that they put into those bikes trickles down to all the way to new riders and no matter whether you're new or experienced we can ride the way those expert riders ride we're going to get the most out of our package the most common place for a, a motorcycle crash or even a car crash is at an intersection. That would be number one. But for motorcyclists, the, the, I think the, the biggest uh, amount of crashes you'll see is failure to negotiate a curve. And generally it's because the rider doesn't know where to look, doesn't know which brakes to use in the curve, has no idea how far the motorcycle can lean. So uh, both those things apply to, to what I do, and of course, as well as what, what Kyle teaches. Yeah, number one place that we're getting hurt or killed on motorcycles is single vehicle accidents on the street, not being able to navigate the corner. 
so we're not controlling our speed for the radius of a corner. You know, other vehicle not being pulled out, but the number one reason is, is just single riders running wide in corners. Number two is intersections, and particularly unmarked intersections that are in the favor of the rider's right of way. So we're talking driveways, parking lots, you know, nothing where there's stop signs or lights. Those are the places that we're struggling the most. And we need to be able to control the speed of our motorcycle in order to get out of those situations, whether it's getting in too hot into a corner and getting close to running over the double yellow line when there's a car coming the other way, or it's, you know, covering the brakes as you're approaching some of those when you start seeing mailboxes on the side of the road and you know that there's those unmarked intersections. So it's, uh, it's such a big deal for us to be, you know, thinking about this in that way of how do we be more preventative at speed. Well, you know, uh, I, I knew the techniques. In fact, I went to the, the street school first and where they, they got into the front brake. And I had known about the front brake and, and trail braking and, and I was using some of the technique, but I wasn't using that technique to the, my best ability or the best ability of the motorcycle. So that's what I really learned, how that front brake can help you. Because even in motor officer training, in, in turns, we were taught to, as you approach the turn, brake, slow down, get off the brake, and then either roll on the throttle through the curve. And I think it's still being taught. And, and uh, now I see a lot of police agencies that come into the Yamaha school because uh, that's just not the correct way. It can be done if you're at a nice leisurely pace, but generally we don't have a crash at a leisurely pace. It's when we're going too fast for the rider's skill level. So uh, I learned that at really how to implement that in the, the one day school and even more so here, uh, though I haven't perfected it, but I know now what I need to work on to, to use the technique to, to its fullest extent. Just like with motor officer training, and I tell people, you know, you know you've, you've heard, turn your head, look where you're gonna go, but, and I thought I was doing that before I went to motor school. The first day of motor school, I realized I was using the technique a tiny bit. Now I use it to its fullest extent, and it changed my riding life, and it's working the same way with the, using that front brake to actually steer the motorcycle around yeah. the curve. I, I really had no idea how good that could work and, and just how good it feels when you got it right. It's kind of interesting because trail braking as a technique is widely considered an advanced riding technique or something that people are not ready for until they've reached a certain level of riding ability. What do you, what do you think about that? Is that something that we can change? Well, I think we should change it because you need to use the best techniques all the time, regardless if you've been riding for a day or, or 20 years. And, and I know that most of the people that come to me have been riding for 10, 15, 20, even 40 years, and they've been riding strictly on instinct. So to, to take a person from not using any or using their instincts and, and little or no technique at all, and then in the end of a few hours, turning that around for them and watching them turn their head and eyes and lean the bike and know which brake to use and when to use it. It should be taught to everybody uh, from the very beginning. Why, why not learn from the best and use how to use those uh, proper techniques? Motorcycle riding is interesting in the, in the way that there's not a really well-defined unanimous set of fundamentals. You know, you, you go to this guy, that guy, this school, this, your buddy who learned how to ride, or you go to MSF or whatever it is, and everybody has different ways that you learn how to ride a motorcycle, different ways to approach a corner. When you look at those fundamentals that are in, whether it's golf or basketball or any other physical activity that we're doing, the fundamentals trickle down from what are the best people that, that do these sports, what do they, what do, they do? And, and at the very top of that scale, there is a pretty unanimous vision on fundamentals. So how can we take what the best riders are doing, the engineers of the motorcycles, the racers that are having to not only ride quickly, but also not fall down? Because, you know, at least for me as a motorcycle racer, yeah, I have to go fast. I have to take some chances to win a race. But if I'm laying in the dirt, I'm not scoring points, I'm not making money, and I'm putting my career in jeopardy. So I think that it's kind of interesting how we look at racing as just trading risk for speed when, as you're seeing, you can actually find pace and enjoyment 
and decrease risk at the same time. Absolutely, and, and to come to this school and to have the, the instructors like yourself, I mean, I, I'm literally thrilled to be here with you and to get instruction from you and, and also Cody and, and Travis and Chris, I'm not sure, I, don't, I don't know his last name, but yeah. every one of the instructors are just top-notch professionals, guys that win the races. Obviously, they know what they're doing because they're winning races. And like I said, I watched you in that last King of the Beggars in the rain. And I, I was just, uh, I was getting goosebumps watching that. I said, how can you get that motorcycle through those turns so fast on, when it's pouring rain out? Yeah. But, but you did it. So who do you want to learn from? Some guy on the Internet that you never heard of or the, the actual guys who's winning the races and, and uh, you know, not crashing under the most extreme conditions. And out on the road, that's what we have most of the time is extreme conditions. It's not a bunch of professionals out there on the street. It's a bunch of people who don't know what they're doing and a lot of people in cars who just don't pay any attention at all to motorcycles. So these techniques, it, it's not just for the racetrack, it's to be used all the time, yeah. everywhere. Because as I'm racing and riding at the limit, right, or the, the edge of grip, the limit of traction on a racetrack, we think, well, all on the street, I'm not, I'm not riding at the limit. But then you find yourself in a situation where you're on this great, you know, mountain road and, you know, you're getting into this corner that you love so much and you mistake it for that corner and it's actually a tighter corner to the other direction and now you're in there a little bit too hot there's a little bit of gravel on the inside on the white line and there's a car coming the, the other way and now you got a four foot spot to hit and yes all of a sudden you are at the limit right so how can we train for those moments and be ready for those moments in order to to navigate and it literally can be the difference you know between a moment of okay, that was close, but I got this, or man, maybe I don't have the talent for this. Maybe I'm not good at this. Maybe I shouldn't ride motorcycles anymore. And in order to grow the sport, we got to put the right techniques in the hands of the riders so everybody can have more fulfillment in the sport, enjoy it for longer, encourage their friends to ride, buy more motorcycles, buy parts and, and apparel and everything, and just keep this whole thing growing. So. And, and you know, a lot of people don't, they, they think they've been riding for years. What are you going to teach me? Well, well, you're learning from the very best of the best. So they're going to teach you the correct way to do it. And the rest is just up to the rider. And it's not a, a, a process that stops at some point. I, I, I've been playing guitar for 40 years. I haven't perfected it yet. I always want to get better at it. Of course, I'm not going to get killed if I screw up and play the wrong notes. But on a motorcycle, very easily, as everybody knows, you make a mistake on the road and it, it could hurt you really bad or get you killed and there's really no reason for it if you know the proper techniques you know how to implement them you practice them on a regular basis and you keep on training through your entire life that's that's the way it really should be can't imagine why anybody would not want to you spend so much money on the motorcycle and accessories that are not going to really help you out on the road but uh, this is life-saving stuff that every motorcycle you get on a motorcycle you should know what you're doing and how to avoid the most common crashes at the very least plus uh, I tell people all the time if you think riding a motorcycle is fun now and you've never taken any training imagine if you actually knew what the hell you were doing Thanks, Jerry. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming out to the school. And, and the best of luck to you. And you know, don't take too many chances. Yeah, not too many. Thanks. Come on, a a little bit more than that. Come on. Nobody likes an answer. <laughs>